you want to get better at guitar and I'm really here to help. If you want to get good at guitar, you're in the right place. <laughs> I want to share a few really cool things that I learned recently that are super important for music. Let's do this. Maybe you should see my pedal board before. A little messy. Cardboard is light, okay? It's light. But it works. I really, really like music. I really like sounds, I like guitar, I like how it makes me feel, but it can also be frustrating. It's a process and we all understand that. But how do we make this process easier? All right, so I'm gonna share with you five points, tricks, tips, however you wanna call it, that really, really helped me. These tips and tricks can really help you, whether you're just a beginner or really advanced because they contain some truth about music and about guitar. So I'm just gonna dive in so you know them. All right, first thing I wanna address is really something that I had an issue with. So sometimes you have things you need to do, whether it's for school, university, work, life, family, whatever it is, and we all have this struggle, struggle of time to practice, yes, time to practice. Well, what I'm really saying is we need to schedule time to practice because I had this problem. What really works for me and actually for a bunch of my friends that are professional musicians is to have a very clear time slot that you do certain things and not leave it for the last thing. So for example, if I want to practice guitar and let's say I'm a doctor or whatever you want to do or whatever you do um, and you have this goal that you want to play some songs and solo and maybe you don't have time. The thing is, like, we all have time during the day. It, the question is how we allocate this time. If you're truly motivated to make some sound with this instrument, I would say the first thing is just take your Google Calendar or whatever calendar you're using and have a half an hour slot. For me, it really works trying to get up very early and doing the practice session early in the day. So, you know, around 11 or 12, I'm already done a bunch of things in my day and then I feel pretty good. If I don't do these things, I feel not as good. Next. Huge, huge, very big news. I'm very excited um, because I'm going on tour with my band, with my trio, and we're going to play at Dazzle in Denver, Colorado on May 3rd and 4th, and then we're going to fly to Seattle to play the 1905 on May 5th and 6th, and potentially even one more show um, to be announced very soon. But I wanted to ask your help because um, sometimes it's not that easy to book <laughs> and to work and to get some of these places aligned. So I wanted to ask you where you guys want us to play a show, and if you have anything that you can help with or a place that you want us to come to, please drop a comment, a comment in. Um, um, in, in the comment section and it would be really really great because we want to play more shows and if you can help in any way you can DM me, you can drop a comment uh, anything would be great we just really want to come and play in your city so let us know thank you <laughs> appreciate it two variables variables okay what I mean by that basically try to have as little variables as possible. So for example, if you're using strings, just try to use the same string. If you're using a strap, try to use the same height of strap. If you're using a pick, I'm using these picks. These picks, which are kind of fun. Oof. Sometimes I'll switch. I'm not saying I never switch picks, but I'll stick with one thing for quite a few months and sometimes years. I used to play with a Fender Heavy for a very long time and I switched to these recently. It doesn't really matter. The point is try to be consistent and I also check it, right? So I'll play shows, I'll play gigs, I'll practice with it and then after a certain time I'm like, okay, I feel good with it, great, until I find the next thing. And sometimes it's because I'm adjusting some other things then the pick will be adjusted as well. The point is just try to not change too many variables. It's way easier, I think, for your body, at least the way I see it, when the height is the same, right? My fingers can learn where things are. And especially when you're just starting to play guitar, getting into music, you know, shifting the position, you can have a strap, you can sit down, it's totally fine. But just trying to be consistent with the height and where things are is really helpful. If this video is helpful in any way, please drop a comment, um, maybe even subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot in support because it takes a long time for me to do this and sometimes it's not easy. So thank you. <laughs> Three. All right. This one is basically just knowing the notes. I'm saying just because it's not as 
hard as you think but it's actually super super valuable because understanding what the notes are and how they relate to each other is actually one of the kind of building blocks of be being able to improvise and get really good at music so you don't need to do everything at once but what I'm suggesting is let's say let's just start understanding the first seven notes on the guitar so taking C do and finding that note all over the guitar so it might take you a second now to do that that's totally fine but the point is that once you start doing that more and more you start tagging these notes the sound of the notes on the instrument and where they are right and that's really helpful because if I'm playing the chord C major and I know that between C and B there's a half step I can say ah C major 7 or C C9 right all these little things make sense because I know where D is alright so the first exercise here is very simple I'm just gonna take C and I know some of you might be advanced and you think you know where all the notes are but you start with the, the tonic notes but then you do chromatic and then you do a few other things that I'll show you right now and this simple exercise really gives us gives can you even talk uh, more control and and really being able to hear and see the music so check this out basically starting from C do, finding that note all across the guitar and you can do it not in time and later on do it in time and then next note D and you can think about it as D or Re both are fine solfege or whatever you want then me and there's also a PDF if you want and if it's helpful once you get comfortable, you can take all the notes across the guitar, like for example F sharp, what I'm doing right now, and, and make sure you can really see it and play it quickly. And then, only then I feel like you can start imagining a chord like C major 7 and say, oh, I'm gonna add the A, but I know exactly where the A is, and that's the 6, or I'm gonna add the D, and I know where the D is because I know where the notes are. Okay, so I know this might be advanced for some people, but start simple take the first seven notes c d e f g a b and start seeing them and the octaves around the fretboard it takes time but do it for five minutes a day four four all right this one is simple again but very very important when i started playing guitar i really always felt like i'm gonna miss the string like i always missed the guitar when i didn't play but i was feeling like I, i'm gonna miss the string and one of the things that I realized that were helpful for me, again, you can do whatever is good for you, I can share and I'm sharing what helped me and I feel is helpful for a lot of people. And it is to kind of separate the two hands. So that means that I'll take my right hand and literally just like, you can do a bar chord or just open strings, I'll do a bar chord because I like the chord A, and I'll literally just kind of play every note down stroke. And I'm dividing this action into two where I'm kind of preparing the the pick on the string and then I'm playing. I'll show you really close. Basically I'm preparing the pick on the string, playing, preparing, playing, preparing, playing, and I want to shorten the time that it takes me between the release of the string and going to the next string. So this is all downstroke. After I do all downstrokes I'll do all up, then down, up, up and down. So you have four options. All down, all up, down, up and up and down. So it will sound like this, up, like this. down up is kind of the usual thing will sound and look like this and I know it's very simple and you think oh I got this I'm telling you it will strengthen the connection between you and the guitar and it will make you feel more confident and you can do things that you didn't think you can do so take your time with this and then up down now of course there are many many variation many variations you don't have to do all the variation in the world we can talk about it later but this is a great place to start and you can be creative with that so you don't have to play you know a major you can play any bar chord or any chord you want you can play all open strings you can jump a string all is a go the point is like dedicating a couple of minutes a day for that connection with the right hand and lastly here i want to take this position of c major scale and a lot of us know this position here which is a great position if you don't can check this uh, PDF here on the screen 
And basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in C where I'm thinking about the chord. So I'm thinking about the chord in the key of C major. So C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C. And I'm gonna sing it and tell myself the chords, although I'm just playing two notes. And then we're gonna shift to another key. Check this out. So, Do, Re, D minor, Mi, E minor, Fa, F major, Sol, G7, or G the fifth, right? G, La, A minor, B diminished, and C major. So, I'm thinking about it kind of as degrees. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna stay in this area, but I'm gonna shift to a new key. The key that I'm shifting is a fourth above, so the cycle of fourth basically, which means F major. Now, these are again simple exercises, but I'm going to stay in the same area of the guitar, so it will kinda force me to see the transition between C major to F major in this area. So F, G minor, A minor, B flat, C, D minor, E diminish and F. Again, F, G minor, the two, A minor, the three, B flat major, the four, C, the five, D minor, the sixth, E diminish and F. And in doing so, I'm reinforcing the sound of the degrees in relation to a center. So, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. What I would suggest with this is trying to find that sliding scale of what's easy and what's hard. Maybe for you it's easy to do thirds on the on the scale of C major, but once you shift to F, you're all lost. Okay, so let's talk about it and try to understand. So the practice needs to be something that is a little bit harder for you, so you need to push yourself just a little bit to understand, but it needs to be not completely out of this world. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.